Donald Trump is in the White House. He got there through several failures of the American people and the American government. There isn't a single driving force that put Donald Trump in the White House. He can be beaten without fixing or dealing with every one of these individual driving forces that put him in there. But once someone is in the White House, something needs to be done about those factors. And there is only a few candidates running that have any kind of solution, actual lasting change solution to those problems. You can point to the fact that dubious people bought Facebook ads. You can point to the vapid nature of our social media. You can point to racism and sexism that guides some people's votes and expectations. And you can even point at the populace themselves for failing to vote for a good candidate. But those won't help you beat Trump now. There are several plans that liberals dream up and expect to make the world better. And those plans have been implemented and tried and have failed. And most of the candidates running for the Democratic ticket are trying to still run on those failed plans. They are failures. And even if they win an election and become president, they will not beat Donald Trump because they will not fix any of America's problem. Our problems are the same that they have always been. Unemployment, poverty, disasters happening to people, peace in a world kind of place, and who our systems of structures work for. Which might be the key point. Even if you think our system as it is, is good or can be good, but can be reformed, in that you admit that the system is not working, and the system is plainly not working for the majority of people. So let's go through some of these failures first. Aaron Sorkin has several shows that I would say are the epitome of liberal thought. When I was going to high school, West Wing was a favorite among the liberal people, and several people thought me, as a conservative, would also super like and enjoy it. I don't know why. Aaron Sorkin postulates that a White House full of smart, clever people that could win in debates will find the center ground and will be able to take America forward and make things better. Aaron Sorkin has two other shows, Newsroom with Jeff Newsroom, where he says if the media takes their jobs very seriously and attacks and wasn't all pansy and just eating out of the hand of the government, then they would make things better or would make for better media that could improve situations. And then he made an SNL show that I forget the name because no one liked it. That's probably not true. But the pseudo SNL show, just like the newsroom and just like the West Wing, took this idea that if we take comedy and we really work hard on it and it bites against the people in power, then that will make things better. And it will make the people see the errors of the people that run our country. As Chapo Trap House has siphoned and analyzed all three of these shows, they've gone through it and seen that these are all failures of television shows. And Chapo Trap House goes into, through individually to talk about why each of these ideas are wrong and bad and executed dumbly in a way that doesn't affect our real world, but they get the added bonus of we got every one of those things in real life. The Obama administration, and also notably the Clinton administration, so I don't know why they went on to make the show, was a show full of very educated college people made to debate that put out strategic ideas and tried to meet the Republicans where their intellectual desires for progress and wanting what's best for America would meet. But that didn't happen in the Obama administration. We got the West Wing and it was a failure against the modern Republican Party because the modern Republican Party is not one that can be reasoned with. There are ones that need to be defeated. And in every step of the Obama administration, they compromised with the Republicans. What happens if you take a good idea and you compromise with complete failures? A failure of an idea. The Obama administration 
compromised on the bill several times in order to make it appeal to Republicans. And the idea was if it appealed to Republicans, then it wouldn't get repealed by Republicans. Republicans are not the people we... But that did not happen. The Obama... <laughs> the Obamacare website was a mess to begin with. It was garbage. And before it even began, it was a Republican idea by the Heritage Foundation, and they didn't even put in a single payer that several people fought for. Now the bill managed to get several changes that people did really like, non-compromising changes done by Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders and a couple of other senators, they got rid of pre-existing conditions, they made health care from a parent cover a child up to age of 25, and they took away spending caps on your insurance. And those three things saved thousands of lives, despite the flawed Medicare for All. Now, as you know, if you think of reality, those three things saved Obamacare, despite constant Republican attacks. And that's because they helped people. And those three things, the Obama administration had nothing to do with. I'm going to tell you this now, if there was a single-payer government option plan, everyone would be down for Obamacare. But it is too late for that. What ultimately happened was Republicans took over and they repealed and took down everything that Obama did. Despite all of the compromises, despite all of the incremental change, Everything Obama did was washed away, and the Republicans were all set to repeal Obamacare, to be replaced later. But that didn't happen, because the public fought for it. Those three, no spending caps, insuring young adults, and pre-existing conditions, is what kept Obamacare on the law, because people flipped their shit. Rod Bloom, who was a failure of a politician, in my district ran to oppose Obamacare. He was awful. He closed down his office in my town so that people wouldn't go to it and tell him not to repeal Obamacare. He stopped visiting here. He screened everyone who came to his town halls to make sure they were Republican so he wouldn't have to listen to everyone just in case there wouldn't be Democrats getting in. And still, the verified Republicans went in there and flipped their shit on his stupid fucking face. And he was such a little bitch about the whole thing that he cried and he moaned and he complained. And now he's no longer our senator. People fought to keep it because it helped their lives. People fought to keep Medicare. People knew that the healthcare insurance industry doesn't want to help them. When you buy health insurance, you're paying someone to argue with you over the phone. And those protections that came with the ACA is what saved it. And all of the compromise and all of the debating and all of the intellectualism fucking failed. Republicans cannot be reasoned and debated with. They must be defeated. And they must be defeated by helping people. A change may be incremental, but if it doesn't change something or make someone's life better or save someone's life, then it's not going to do anything. It's not going to stay and it is not worth making. Since the election of Donald Trump to the presidency, gross how that happened. Oh wait, I just said that. <laughs> the other two big shows of Aaron Sorkin have come to fruition. SNL is super serial about calling out the president and making fun of the ones in power. And the news runs things every day about the president needing to be impeached. And news broadcasters run stories every day about how the president needs to be impeached, how he's done awful things. But they're very vague about those awful things. As Cody from Cody Shoddy, also known as known as Some More News, has pointed out, the people in the audience never press the president or his cabinet members on the many crimes they're doing or talk about his many crimes or refer to him as a crime person. But the news does do what Aaron Sorkin thought they should. Talk about this stuff every day. Talk about how it's bad 
<laughs> a plot Osama bin Laden or a terrorist being murdered. We have SNL and CNN running stories every day about how Trump bad. And every week there are sketches about how Trump bad or is dumb or should not run the country. And neither of them are greatly changing people's minds. Neither of those things have taken Donald Trump out of office. And neither of those things will because those liberal dreams are failures. Donald Trump's base you might call racist, sexist, bad people. But they, at their heart, are just normal people. What makes someone racist in their upbringing is pain. People feel a pain. People are in pain. Their lives are not great. Their jobs are n go nowhere. Their hard work does not pay off. And the Republican response to this is to scapegoat. Say it's the brown people, it's the teachers, it's the liberals. Their solutions never make anyone's life better and make several people's lives worse. But it's results they can show their racist people. It's results they can show their supporters because their supporters don't want their lives to get better. They don't want their pain gone. They want the solution that has been sold to them. So if we take away their pain, they won't need the other thing. They won't need the scapegoat. There is one candidate that has a plan that will help people's pain. One candidate that will make kind of changes that will make people's lives actively better. And when Republicans come for those programs and systems, the people will flip shit to protect those systems. And that is the same person that put in those clauses into the ACA. That person is Bernie Sanders. I know Amy Klobuchar helped, but her positions are balls. Bernie Sanders is the one we want in office. Bernie Sanders is the compromise that we want. What we want is for everyone to have food, clothes, shop, <laughs> housing, a satisfying job, enough money to take care of their family, health care, and to not die in the street. We want all those things. In our economy, we have an excess of all of those things and could just give them to people. We could give every person a home right now. The compromise is letting the system continue and making changes to it. The compromise that you want for these problems is in Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders has a housing for all plan. that will make housing more affordable and put more funds to people keeping, building, and living in safe homes. Bernie Sanders has a plan to increase the minimum wage, which would boost the economy and give the average people more spending money. Now, right now, the president is doing really well with the economy, and that is because we count the economy wrong. Thousands of people are dead and dying without health care, but the economy has reached an all-time high. When we say the economy, we need to think about what that means. Right now, our economy is doing great because it is helping the elite few billionaires and millionaires at the top, and only them, and is making everyone else's lives worse. The stock market runs off of human misery. If raising the minimum wage hurts the stock market, it helps the people. And helping the people should be our economy. Because the truth is, our economy does work. It works to help the billionaires and millionaires at the top. And everyone else is a bottom feeder. Even the lower upper class are bottom feeders to the top. Even they are being exploited by the top and exploiting the people underneath them. What I'm saying is extreme, and you might not be there with me, but the compromise is Bernie Sanders, with an increased minimum wage, taking money out of politics, because right now politics works for people that aren't you. It works for billionaires, but it needs to work for the people and taking money out of campaign spending will do that. The justice system works for the billionaires. It makes money for the state and for the billionaires. Bernie Sanders has social justice reform 
that will ban all private prisons, will take down drug laws, and will seriously change how we do things and make it more fair and make it so that our justice system works for the people. It's a compromise to just giving everybody everything, but it's one that stays within our system and makes it a lot better. So Andrew Yang has a program where he gives people a thousand dollars a month or a week. It's something. I don't know. It's a freedom dividend. It's like this thousand dollars will make people's lives better. And it's true that everyone having a thousand dollars would, could be better. But the way that he has it, he does not have protections for that money. Food stamps are stamps for a reason because your landlord cannot collect food stamps for your rent. So he can't make rent more expensive knowing that you have food stamps. It can just be spent on food. And that's what keeps millions of families eating regularly. Andrew Yang has no such protection with his freedom dividend. In fact, Andrew Yang has said that several public health programs will be replaced by the Freedom Dividend. Now, if you're unfamiliar with our healthcare system, it costs a lot more than $1,200 to have healthcare, and good, especially if you then need health. Health insurance is a huge waste of money. There are several candidates that point to a single payer plan, like what was originally supposed to be in Obamacare, as a compromise to Bernie's Medicare for All. But they haven't said how much that single payer will work. Andrew Yang doesn't know how much his single-payer health care will cost. Chances are, it'll be more expensive than Medicare for All, because it still depends on insurance existing. We will still spend a stupid amount of money on insurance and not on people being taken care of. Medicare for All is the superior plan, and is the compromise to just nationalizing all of our health care because it would not be nationalizing health care there'd still be your doctor there'd still be independent stuff there's still people going to college and making money but insurance would be gone that third expense that third party would be gone just us paying to keep ourselves healthy bernie sanders is the compromise you want and the thing to take away from this video the liberal rhetoric of following rules and decorum is not what makes people's lives better Making people's lives better is what makes people's lives better and what will lead to changes being lasting and staying. February 3rd, 2020, vote for Bernie Sanders in your Iowa caucus. Vote for Bernie Sanders in all of your primaries. If Bernie fails, stick with Bernie Sanders because he has a plan to mobilize getting these things. He is going to fight for each of the these improvements to your life if he is the president or not and the only way we can improve people's lives is to go for these compromises of bernie sanders and not the decorum of joe biden and not and not the empty representation of elizabeth warren or kamala harris though yes k hive she's out of the race but oh well every other strategy and position of every other candidate is a failure strategy that is decorum and that does not and will not help people's lives. I would still vote for a Democrat because a Democrat will listen to Bernie Sanders and even as they try to erase him, his influence is felt in other people's answers and he says the right answers and the correct things. Also, Bernie Sanders, not sexist. He didn't say that Elizabeth Warren couldn't be president because she's a woman. And even if he did say that thing, it wouldn't make him sexist because he would be making a judgment on reality that people use as an excuse to why Hillary Clinton didn't win. And Hillary Clinton didn't win because she was an awful, filthy failure of a liberal. And she didn't go to Michigan. And she didn't make people's lives better. She ran off decorum and entitlement. Neither of which she has earned. But Bernie Sanders has. Bernie Sanders is the compromise we need. Vote for Bernie Sanders. And if he's not elected, fight with Bernie Sanders because he's fighting for you. And he's made a system for you to gather up for you. In the Burn app, you can gather your friends. You can build local people that will help you fight and petition 
for things beyond this election. You can make people's lives better because that's the only way we're going to improve the world. Bernie Sanders is the only one that full throat supports the Green New Deal, still. Everyone else thinks of compromises, they want to soften it. Bernie Sanders is gung-ho for the Green New Deal, and has written out and fleshed out the Green New Deal, and is the first jobs bill that will come to Kentucky for decades. Mitch McConnell has done bullshit nothing for Kentucky. Kentucky people are failing. My family is from Kentucky. I have people in Pikesville, Kentucky, that are my family, that I love, that work as nurses. I'm, I don't think we have any Myers anymore because they all shut down, but I'm the second generation of my family not to die of the black law. Mitch McConnell is a batshit bastard who only cares about his own status, decorum, and getting money from China and from his dealings. Our government and the Republican Party works to make Mitch McConnell money. And it fucking hates Kentucky. It would destroy it. The Republican Party is actively destroying Kentucky for their own financial gain. And one thing they don't talk about in the news about the Green New Deal is it's going to involve a lot of money going from the blue states, from the big cities, into the red states. The red states will make so much money and their lives will improve so much off the Green New Deal. Mitch McConnell doesn't give a shit. Mitch McConnell's never done anything for Kentucky and never done anything that didn't benefit himself. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez cares more about the people of Kentucky than any representative from there. She probably hasn't even visited. And she's put forward a bill that will put more money and more jobs in Kentucky that they very much so need. We're not- Don't cast your bill for decorum, for these liberal values of we'll look better, we'll argue, we'll compromise in this way. We need to make people's lives better or we are Republicans. Every Democrat on that stage that doesn't fight to make people's lives better with these positions of Bernie Sanders are as good as Republicans and we will backslide and we will fail and we will aggress and our habitat will be destroyed and our economies will work to make the few billionaires rich and then they will live on their compounds with their own mercenary groups protecting them from everyone else. They will fly on rockets and try to colonize other planets to be away from all of the filthy pores and the planet they destroyed. Vote for Bernie Sanders, but get in on these positions. It's the only way we will win, and it's the only way we can bury the awful, terrible tragedy that has been the Donald Trump administration. And more than that, the Republican administration, because Donald Trump is not an outlier of the Republicans he fits right in. They are not to be compromised with, they are to be defeated. The hope we have is that these are winning strategies. Once people's lives are better, they'll stay better. You can't take away people's food stamps. You can't take away our social security. They can't take away our pre-existing conditions. They can't take away the spending cap now that it's there because we fought to keep it. And if we fight for those changes, we'll win. Because every Republican strategy still has the pain and still fails the people. Every liberal Democrat strategy still fails the people and is still failed. Once our changes are made, they will stay because they'll make people's lives better.